surgical management of the mandibular frenum. Unlike the maxillary frenum, which presents functional and aesthetic problems, generally the mandibular frenum only presents functional problems. One of the considerations that we need to have is the fact of how the tooth erupts. And you notice as it erupts facially, you can end up with a mucosal margin, even if you don't have recession, or you can have a gingival margin. So the path of insertion determines whether you have a mucosal margin or a gingival margin. There are many things that contribute to this, and these are some of the theories. First of all, there is tension on the area from the frenum. Number two, this can be traumatized with toothbrush and so forth. Inflammation can contribute. Trauma from occlusion is concerned. And the eruption pattern of the tooth, as we've discussed before, and the presence or absence of attached gingiva. Is this an aberrant frenum or has it become aberrant because of the marginal tissue recession? I submit that that is the case. The pouch technique to treat this. This was an early on case and you'll notice how we are flapping the papilla, creating a pouch as we see here, in which we will drop connective tissue and you will note that 90% of the graft has been covered uh, by soft tissue and this means that we have bilaminar circulation as Nelson described for us uh, back in 1987. We see the width it's going to be and we see two weeks post-op where immature tissue is present. And now we look at a long-term post-op on this and you will see that we do have the recession treated. We do have attached gingiva above that. And we can see from this outline where the connective tissue was underneath that. So this is where we started. And now we show you a 25-year post-op, even though some recession has, has reoccurred and there's root abrasion from improper tooth brushing, you will see that we have keratinized tissue uh, coronal to the flap and we can see the free gingival groove. This is an interesting case. A periodontal defect uh, with a phrenectomy. In this case we did a non-surgical bone graft on the man mandibular central incisor which was probing 8 uh, millimeters and we did this at the time that we did the phrenectomy technique. Secondly, Connective tissue was used to uh, rebuild the papilla, and a laterally positioned flap was used to cover the connective tissue in the interdental area. So here's a case we're talking about. As we note here, this truly is an aberrant frenum because it does not insert at the mucogingival junction. It inserts well into the gingiva. You will see where the pencil mark is on the mesial of that central incisor and from the depth of that recession, there was an eight millimeter probing depth, which as I said earlier, was treated with a non-surgical bone graft. Now we're making the incisions for the uh, laterally positioned flap. And now here's the connective tissue on the left that is gonna be placed uh, in the prepared area. And you will see on the right where we're using uh, the flap to cover that. And in this particular case, the pre-op, and here we see that the graft has been placed interdentally and the flap is closed over that in an attempt to gain some increase in papilla height. With the primary healing present, uh, you can see that we do have attached gingiva, but now the frenum is aberrant and we need to get rid of the frenum. And what we're going to do is the corn technique where we did the periosteal separation fenestration as you can see and which we have described earlier and as we look at this we see the initial healing and the apical star scar present preoperatively and this is the way that the area healed up the next thing that we want to discuss is when do we need to do uh, grafting and so forth here we have two patients, and in these patients, I ask the question, do they need to be grafted? And I will make an argument that they don't, because on the left, 
you can see the prominence of that central incisor. And once orthodontics is done, that gingival marginal tissue will move incisally and the gingival heights of all those teeth will be evened out. On the right, we see a more severe case. Does that need a graft? In all probability, most orthodontics would like to have that done. But please note, there is no recession. There is no pocket. There is no inflammation. And when that tooth is moved distally and lingually, that gingival margin is going to rise. And in all probability, we're going to end up with much more attached gingiva. So this is, these are two cases. Number one on the left does not need a graft. The one on the right, certainly go ahead and start the orthodontic movement. If recession occurs, then you could graft at that point. Now, what is recession and what is not recession? Well, I've already alluded to that. Recession is root exposure, not uneven gingival heights. This is a case, recession or not recession. I can make an argument for repositioning that tooth and looking at it as orthodontic treatment proceeds and graft at that time. However, with the amount of inflammation, I would have no problem with going in there and doing a free gingival graft. This is an interesting case. This young patient went to a referring dentist of mine about 100 miles from Memphis, and the mother wanted something done on this lower central because she thought recession was present. The dentist was very perceptive, realizing that orthodontic treatment would be done and this tooth retracted and the gingival margin would rise and the patient would end up with the same amount of gingiva as on the adjacent teeth and no gingival asymmetry. The mother was not convinced and says, well, I'd like to see a specialist and get his opinion. Hence, the patient ended up in my office. So I confirmed to the mother that what the dentist had told the uh, patient was exactly right. I could see from the look on her face that she was not convinced and she frowned and pulled her lower lip down and showed me the recession that was present in her mouth on the right. On the left, you can see that there's no, on the child, that there was no uh, recession, only gingival asymmetry. And I said, or as I said earlier, uh, this does not require grafting. We do see the recession on the mother and this does require a connective tissue graft. So rather than grafting the child, we grafted the mother. Deepening the vestibule in a young child to prevent a future pull of the frontum. Uh, this is what I did on several cases because when the orthodontist sent the patient over uh, expecting to have a graft done, I would suggest that we deepen this using uh, Harry Bohannon's uh, technique along with uh, Herman Korn's. Because what Bohannon found that if you did not expose bone at the depth of the periosteal separation, the vestibule would completely reform. So we went in there and did the corn technique that we have described before. And you can see where the incision was made, split thickness down about five millimeters, and then bone exposed in this area. You would think that this would be very painful, but don't mention to the patient that bone is exposed. And in about two weeks, that will heal over nicely as we see here. The frenum is gone, no pull there. Tooth is gonna to be moved lingually. That's gonna self-correct and no graft would be necessary. Here we see the apical scar. Another case, we can see there is recession on this. Does this need to be grafted? And on the right, we see a two week post-op and remember the slide before with all the bone exposed, the rapid healing that takes place in the young child. This is really not a painful procedure, although it looks like it would be, but this heals in about two weeks and the thing that I would like for you to see is the rebound of the gingiva and no recession is present. For as we know, things happen very rapidly in the young child, and let's take advantage of that spontaneous rapid healing. Now, this is a different case. Orthodontics is complete, which means that the marginal tissue is not going to rise. We've got the marginal tissue where it is, but more importantly, on the right, look at the probing depth we have. We've got a periodontal pocket here, and any gingiva, which I do not see, would be unattached. Now, 
You can go in there and do a connective tissue graft as we have done here and the healing following the connective tissue flap that was placed in the pouch. Again, notice that the frenum was not removed. The frenum is at the mucogingival junction, so therefore it is not aberrant and is make, not making any pull on the gingiva. In this particular situation, orthodontics is complete, but look at the inflamed tissue in the papilla area on these two central incisors. No way could you flap that area to place a, a connective tissue graft in the pouch. The only thing I can see that can be done here is to go in and do a free gingival graft. And that's one of the indications for the free gingival graft. First of all, there's immature tissue in a young child in the palate. So if a child is less than 10, I think you're necessarily gonna to have to do a free gingival graft. But if the patient is 12, 14, connective tissue generally is mature enough to be used and placed in a pouch. In this case, I just showed you the poor quality of tissue did not lend itself to creating a pouch. So in that case, a free gingival graft is done and note that the vestibule has been deepened by the free gingival graft. Thank you for watching this and I would like to thank Jonathan Chaney who was my web designer and video editor. Thank you very much.